Good morning, and welcome to the University Church in Yale on this warm and muggy day in Battelle Chapel. I see a number of fans in the chorus out here. Um, if you are in need of one, there are two baskets in the back. Feel free at any point to go and help yourself cool down. My name is Benjamin Geeting. I serve as the liturgical, liturgical coordinator here at UCY, and on behalf of Pastor Ian, Pastor Jenny, and all who make UCY happen, it is so good to see you and welcome. Please rise in body or spirit and join me in the call to worship. God has drawn near to us. Draw nearer, O oh God, to us, your people. This day we welcome our God. With thanks and praise we worship. For God's wisdom is to our benefit and God's ways toward every good end. We worship you, God, source of every truth. We will praise you for all of our days.
Amen. You may remain standing for our time of confession. To come before God with the truth of our lives is itself an act of faith. We trust that the Holy One is interested in us, interested in our minds, our hearts, and our souls. We trust that God's mercy and grace is intended for us also. With faith and in trust, let us make now our confession to God, first together as a community and then in silent confession. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, at times we feel so frail and fragile, getting blown about by the latest crisis, by bad news, by our own short tempers and failings. You call us to hold fast to what is good, but so often we flounder, unable to find that solid thing that will center us again. Help us, we pray. Help us to see you as our center and to cling to the good that you create in the world. Help us to set aside all our jealousies and prejudices, all of our distractions and false treasures, all that adds to the world's hurt. Help us to grow even more into Christ-likeness, that we will bear his love and wisdom to the world. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Hear the good news. The love of God is beyond measure, and you are included in that love. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. The peace of Christ be always with you. Let us now turn to one another, introduce ourselves as we, if we are new, wave, share a peace sign, but share the peace of Christ with one another and those on Zoom. Please join me in the prayer of illumination. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Christ our heaven, amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened to, into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf tender and good and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's seat and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the good news of the gospel. Praise to you, O Christ. may be seated. Please join me in prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on this place. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. How many people here today can relate to Martha in our gospel reading for this morning? Quite a few hands. I think we've all become exhausted or resentful from a chore or task we are doing for the benefit of others. Whether it's washing the dishes, cleaning the bathroom, tidying up our own room, there are tasks we often are quite willing to do that can become cumbersome. Times when we want to turn to our family, our roommate, our partner, or really when we just want to turn to anyone, even when we live on our own, and say, isn't it your turn to tap in? Isn't it just anyone else's turn but mine to take care of this? I think we all can relate to this feeling in various ways. And Martha, who was usually a very gracious host, had hit her breaking point. Based on the details preserved in scripture, we can assume that Martha was a woman of means. Jesus is said to have entered Martha's home, not her brother's home or her husband's home, whose names scholars contend would have been included if she was living in a male relative's home. No, in this story, it's specified that Jesus entered Martha's home. Maybe she was a widow, maybe she didn't ever married, we don't know. But what we do know is that Martha was a woman who wanted to welcome Jesus into her home and to take care of him. In Palestinian culture, Pastor Naveen Saras writes, eating together is an invitation to be a part of the family circle. It is about breaking barriers and providing protection to guests, no matter the personal cost. In my culture, she continued, and in first century Palestine, hospitality is about allowing the guest to share the sacredness of the family space. Thus Martha, being the head of her house and the host, clearly wanted Jesus to be fully welcomed as she welcomed him into her home and into her family system. Like Abraham in Genesis 18, which Kaylee read so beautifully, Martha likely wanted to do all she could for her guests, sharing of her bread and water, cooking and cleaning and preparing the best oils and grains and meats her home could provide for the guest of honor. Hospitality and service, we know, are strongly held Judeo-Christian values. One of our biggest calls as a Christian people is to serve our neighbors. In the same chapter, Luke 10, verses before this experience, Jesus is telling the, the story of the Good Samaritan, which Richard aptly preached about last week. Seeing our neighbors, caring for them, increasing their well-being, being willing to have our own plans be interrupted so that we might help another, 
These are highly praised acts in Christianity. And Martha is living into this value by seeking to care for Christ and his followers. But as we know, as the story goes, Martha became overwhelmed by everything that she was trying to do. So overwhelmed that her tasks of welcome became less about the love and hospitality she could extend and more about a great burden she was trying to rush to complete. The difference is something we each can relate to. Hosting at its best feels like we're infusing everything we do and offer with love and care, saying, this is mine, let it be yours too. As the popular saying goes, baking is love made edible. And serving others, sharing our hospitality generously is a beautiful way of saying without words, I see you, I value you, and I want your needs to be met. This kind of service is satisfying and loving. It feels purposeful and sustaining, even as it can be time intensive and tiresome at times. But we all know there's a fine line between that kind of hosting, which sounds great, and hosting when you're exhausted and it feels like your work isn't being valued. This kind of hosting is draining. The ease of acting with love disappears and chaos, stress, and panic can take over. I'm sure anyone who has prepared a Thanksgiving dinner can maybe relate to this feeling. Martha, it seems, is stuck in this place. I'm sure when Jesus arrived, she was in a good place and even popped her head out of the kitchen when Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet and thought, oh, how nice, my sister is hearing his stories and wisdom and she smiled to herself. Yet somewhere between that gratitude and her growing to-do list, the resentment and stress kicked in. Suddenly, a voice of negativity snuck in. Why isn't Mary helping me? Why isn't anyone helping me for that matter? Why am I not being further praised for my hard work? Here I am, sweating away, and no one is even noticing. So with conviction, she went into the living room and said to Christ, hoping he might chastise Mary, Lord, do you not care that Mary has left me all of the work to do? I can think of the many Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners where I would storm into the dining room when one of my brothers was still chatting away with my grandparents after we'd finished eating. And I'd been working hard to clean the dishes, expecting them to join, thinking, what about me? Didn't I get credit for being the best grandchild for doing the dishes? They're just sitting there, skipping the worst part of the day. Jesus, I think, knew Martha's heart when he responded to her in this moment. He knew the layers of emotion and stress and resentment that was growing beneath her question. And so he spoke right into Martha. He surprised her. And instead of praising her like she hoped, he praised Mary saying, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. This, there is need for only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part. In other words, Jesus was saying to Martha, you've got it all turned around. There is value in what Mary is doing. She's spending time with me, listening and learning. You are engaging in service and hospitality, which is valuable and is good. But Jesus knew Martha's heart in that moment and her heart wasn't in the hospitality anymore. So he wanted to show her another way. Her value didn't come from her labor. Her relationship to him wasn't rooted in what she could prove or achieve or complete for him. No, Christ didn't need her service for the sake of having more food or more drink. Instead, he desired relationship. Instead, he centered connection. He could see Martha was spinning away into a place of overwhelm, resentment, and distance. And I hear him saying, Martha, come back to me. Slow down. If you need help, ask for help. But recognize the value in Mary simply sitting with me. And if you wish, you can come and do the same. Others could attend to the tasks, or in good time, maybe all three of them could have completed the work together. Jesus didn't care about the food being hot or the table being set. He desired relationship. And as Martha's stress overtook her attention, he sought to bring her back. I can see the wisdom of this from the Thanksgiving and Christmas dishes story I just shared. 
Of course, the dishes do need to be done and that work needs to be valued and not just seen as one person or certain person's work in the family. But spending extra time with one another, for me as a grandchild, spending extra time with my grandparents, hearing their stories, sharing my own stories and hopes and fears, spending time to slow down and break bread instead of jumping into what was next on the to-do list was valuable in and of itself. And I think this is what Jesus is trying to reveal to Martha and to us too. There is value in just being in relationship with one another and with God. There is value in creating slow time to just be with God for the purpose of listening. There is faithfulness in simply listening and learning so that we might later go forth and do the work. This lesson feels important for us today, at least it's been important for me. We are pulled in so many directions, at least can anyone relate being pulled in, in various directions, even by just the phone in our pocket, by the news, which there's always something different devastating happening, by our jobs, by our academics, by our responsibilities, by our plans for the future. It can feel luxurious, frivolous even, to carve out time to simply sit at the feet of Jesus and listen, to sit with our elders and lose track of time, to talk to a stranger and treat them as if they are family. But this is the wisdom of Mary. She broke cultural norms by leaving the kitchen and sitting at Jesus' feet. She slowed down and recognized that she too had something to learn and she longed to be transformed. She didn't just leave that work to the men who were used to sitting and listening to Jesus. She joined them and she created a space for her heart and her head to be transformed by Christ. And in doing so, she joined a long line of women who did the same. Hunia, Tabitha, Priscilla, Phoebe, Prisca, Mary Magdalene, and many more women whose stories are preserved in scripture for us to look to as beloved ancestors. Mary stepped further into her relationship with Christ by slowing down and giving him her full attention. She embodied John Tarrant's words that attention is the most basic form of love. Through it we bless and are blessed. Attention is the most basic form of love. Where is there room for all of us to give our full attention to God and to one another? Coming to church is one way that we do this. I honestly think that church is one of the few hours in a week when for a full hour I'm not checking my phone. In church, I can't multitask more than doodling on my bulletin, which sometimes can actually be a way that helps me listen. In church, in this place, we all come and we offer our attention. Sure, sometimes we're distracted, our minds water, wander, or we become sleepy, especially on muggy days like this. But church is a time when each of you here today said, I am going to set aside this time to be with God. And that's radical, I think. Are there more spaces in each of our lives where we can bring this attention and slowness? We need not always be doing. That's not where our value comes from. Instead, in our relationship with God, in our relationships with one another, are there ways that we can love by simply paying full attention? We are still called to serve with acts of service and hospitality. Eventually, the dishes have to get done. But if we give one another and ourselves the gifts of slow time, maybe we can even go about our chores and acts of service together with love as our motivation. So this week, Let's be like Mary, and let's be like Martha. Let us serve when it is time to step up and serve, and let us listen when it is time to protect the time to listen. Let us be discerning so that we might know which way we are being called to in each moment. 
trusting that if we slow things down, the loving way forward will be made clear. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jenny. Here at UCY, we are blessed to be able to provide our offering to neighboring organizations in New Haven. This week's organization is the Connecticut Food Bank, and prices for necessities are rising across the board, such as food and gas, so please give generously. And may those who are helping with the offering please come forward now.
As we move to prayer, just take a second and breathe in and breathe out. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the hope that Christ brings into our world as they make their home with us. Through your work, hope has been gifted to us. Yet keep us aware of the manifold ways you do your work. Sometimes your good news comes to us in unexpected ways. For often your ways are not our ways. Sometimes your good news means the transformation of things familiar, including us along with it. Sometimes your good news means that we abandoned what we think you would want in favor of something else like in the story of Mary and Martha. Help us to receive whenever and however you interact with us, but most especially when it is hard to grasp such interaction. You are our greatest hope, and we submit ourselves to you. And God, we take these final moments to silently pray for our family, our friends, our community, our church, our state, our country, for the war in Ukraine to end, for our world, for the marginalized and the oppressed, for our many needs, and for us to better serve you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The table of bread and wine is now to be made ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and all who love him. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often and you who have not been here for a long time or ever before. You who have tried to follow Jesus and all of us who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites you to be known and fed here. A server will offer you a piece of bread and there are individual cups of grape juice. If you do not wish to receive communion but would like to receive a blessing, simply come forward and hold your hands on your chest and the server will offer you a blessing. Gluten-free communion is also available. If you come to either station, we can serve you. For those that are joining on Zoom, we invite you to join us with grain and cup if you wish. There will be time for you to receive just before everyone else does at the end. And if you do not wish to receive remotely, we invite you to join us in prayer. The prayer that I will be using today for our communion liturgy comes from a fourth century liturgy used in the city of Alexandria. As we pray, sing, and receive together, may we feel connected to our ancestors then and Christians today throughout the world. I now invite you to stand and let us join together in the ancient prayer of the church. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, God, to give you thanks, 
For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light, inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we glorify your name and lift our voices together in joyful praise. We claim you, holy God, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through your prophets, you taught us the hope of salvation. Almighty God, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet was without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, God sent the Holy Spirit, God's gifts for all who believe, to complete God's work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified, by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, Jesus loved them to the end. And at supper, with them, he took bread. And after giving thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for all of you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Shed for you, for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Holy God, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, waiting for his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you, singing together the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Heavenly Father, shown forth among us the presence of your life-giving word and Holy Spirit to sanctify us and your whole church through this sacrament. Grant that all who share in the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ may be on in him and may remain faithful in love and hope. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup, 
Grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. Now let us join together in the ancient prayer Jesus taught his followers to pray so long ago in whatever language or translation is closest to your heart. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. The gifts of God for the people of God. For those who wish to receive communion on Zoom, I invite you to bring forward your elements. The body of Christ given for you the blood of Christ shed for you. I now invite the communion servers to come forward.
Thank you, Noah. I now invite you to stand in body and spirit and join me in the prayer after communion. Gracious God, thank you for the invitation to be known and fed at your table. We give you thanks for the myriad of ways you reach out to us with your loving embrace. Send us out as your renewed people, inspired to love and serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us join together in singing our closing hymn, Lord, whose love through humble service. Just two very quick announcements before we send you on your way. The first of which is we will be having coffee hour on the lawn right through that exit over there. And the second of which is Pastor Ian is back next Sunday after his vacation. Woohoo! Now please join me in our final benediction. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? God has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? 
but to do justice, to do justice, and to love kindness, and to move humbly with your God, to move humbly with our God. Amen. And may the one in three and three in one bless and sustain you this week. Go in peace.